Starship has already proven itself to be one beast of a rocket, with unparalleled metrics to go along with it such as thrust, mass to orbit, and more, and as expected, it has drawn attention from all corners of the globe. Starship's clients range from space-flying tourists all the way up to government organizations like the Department of Defense. NASA wants to achieve its lofty goals, and it is concentrating all of its attention on SpaceX's Starship Flight 3, signaling the major demands that might alter everything. So, what is NASA's major demand for Starship Flight 3? Is NASA relying too much on SpaceX? Let's find out in today's episode of SpaceX Flight. But before we get in, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss another awesome episode. And with that, let's get into it. The space race is becoming even more fierce, with more and more nations setting their sights on the lunar south pole. In just five years, ten nations have collectively undertaken around 20 missions to the moon, of which half were successful, and that number is set to increase even more to 30 missions by the end of 2024. The NASA of today is not the NASA of 1960, when it reigned supreme. Now other nations are catching up to the progress left by NASA, as lunar exploration is more technologically feasible than ever. As such, NASA will be watching with eagerness at the third launch, as they need Starship to be up and running by the time Artemis III kicks in around 2026, as it is the lunar lander they have chosen to take astronauts to the lunar surface and back into orbit again. NASA has assigned many objectives for SpaceX to complete if it wants to bring its lunar lander to the moon, one of which is in-orbit propellant transfer, and NASA has awarded a $53 million tipping point contract in 2020 to demonstrate it can internally move 10 tons of liquid oxygen between its header tank and its main tank. Although a small amount compared to the 1,200 tons of propellant the ship can store, this is an important first step in the journey towards larger ship-to-ship -ship fuel transfers in the future. A large fuel depot will be placed in Earth orbit as it takes around 8 to 16 tanker launches to completely fuel the ship, then it can depart for the moon. Another NASA objective is to land the lunar lander on the moon safely from lunar orbit. When all the above is completed successfully, NASA will certify and assign the Starship lunar lander for Artemis missions 3 and 4. NASA is heavily betting on Starship for a good reason. They just see so much potential in a super heavy lift launch vehicle which can be reused dozens of times and with quick turnaround times, far more easier to mass-produce compared to NASA's own launch system, the SLS, which can be produced at only one per year, with costs in excess of $4 billion per mission, and with much higher launch cadence, cheaper launch prices. NASA can do much more with SpaceX, and not only in the future, but also right now, as SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket can already launch goods into space at cheaper prices than their competitors. And because of this, they have exclusive contracts to launch crew and cargo onto the ISS, and also to the future Lunar Gateway Station. If SpaceX's Starship is far cheaper and far more powerful than the SLS rocket, won't Starship replace the SLS rocket entirely? This is a real possibility, as SpaceX's lunar lander can be scaled up further to support high-frequency missions delivering cargo and crew to the moon, paving the way for SpaceX's offshoot moon colonization program and can assist government agencies and later commercial enterprises on the moon with research, logistics, mining, and making a fully-fledged lunar city possible while also opening up a stepping stone for further deep space missions. Since Starship is far cheaper to launch between missions, it means NASA can cut back on expensive rockets like the SLS and free up some much-needed funding totaling around $4 billion to be allocated to a variety of other, more beneficial missions and projects. It is simply the most convenient solution for their problems. However, the SLS is here to stay, thanks to strong support from the US government, and any plans to ditch the SLS for Starship can be politically costly. However, in the end, the most convenient option will always prevail no matter what, and when Starship is fully operational, it will truly unlock a brand new world of possibilities that were once deemed unconquerable. And that concludes today's episode. We really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment box below. We value your input, and it helps us create better videos for you. Also, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss another awesome episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.